Hello, my name is Selim and welcome back to the Nemesendo channel. In today's tutorial, we'll be implementing adaptive footsteps in an Unreal Engine 4 project. So in the context of game audio, the terms adaptive or dynamic refer to sound effects that can change based on the player's surroundings. So in the case of footsteps, this means footstep sounds that can react to the surface that the player is walking on. So to do this, I'll be using our latest plugin, Nemesendo Adaptive Footsteps, which is available right now on the Unreal Marketplace. And this will make things super easy, as you'll see in a second. So I've loaded a first-person example project from the Unreal Engine 4 templates, and I've just deleted everything that's not necessary for this tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is head to our first-person character blueprint, and we're going to go to Add Component, type in Footsteps, and here you can see the default Footstep class, as well as all the presets, uh, which there are 12 of. And for now, I'm just going to add the default Footstep class. Now that it's in the Components panel, when you click on it, you can go into the Settings and see all the parameters of the model. Step Firmness refers to how firm the steps are, a low value will be more delicate steps and a high value will be more like a heavy stomping. Then we have the shoe type. We have four of them, trainers, high heels, Oxford shoes, which are men's dress shoes and work boots. Then we have our surface type, which there are seven of. The terrain type, either flat or stairs, the output gain in decibel, which can go to plus 30 to minus 30. And then we have the automation panel. When it's enabled, the footsteps will keep being generated over and over at the rate determined by the pace parameter, uh, which is in steps per minute. And then we have the steadiness, which refers to the amount of randomization uh, of the timing between steps. A high value will be a very steady pace, and a low value will be sort of a drunken walk or a sleepy walk. Then we have the surface detection panel, uh, which I'll get into in a minute. So for now, I will just have automated uh, unchecked and I will keep everything default. So the first thing we need to do in order to generate sound is to initialize the synth. And we can do that by calling the start function. Not the start walking, but just the start function. What this does is it initializes the synth uh, with all the parameters we specified here. And similarly, on event end play, we can call the stop function to make sure that the synth gets deleted properly and all the processes get cleared. And if I enable the automated mode right now and press play, we will be able to hear footsteps. I'll just uncheck that for now. So the first thing I'll do is get references to each uh, of our control keys. I'm using WASD. I'm gonna get a reference to footsteps here. I'll add two reroute nodes and I'll link the pressed event of each of these to the first one and the released event to the second one. So when Either one of these keys is pressed, we need the footsteps to start. So I'm just going to call start walking here. And when all the keys are released, we need to call stop walking. But we need a little bit of extra logic to check that all the keys have been released. So for that, I've already added a macro here. And in order for this to work, I need to get player controller. And that is an input to my macro here. What this macro does is that uh, it checks is input key down for all four specified keys. And then it uses this cascade of branches to check that all of them have been released. If all of them are false, then the output will get executed. So that's how this macro works. And now if I compile and save, and I press play, we should not hear any footsteps until I start walking. And then when I stop walking, it stops. There's an extra bit of logic that we can add in order to optimize this. 
we don't really need to call start walking if we're already walking. So I've added a variable here called currently walking, which is a boolean. What we can do is take a branch, bring this over here. And then instead of directly calling the function start walking, we can check the value of currently walking. And only if we aren't already walking, then we call this function. Then we can do the same thing on the bottom. And so you can see that if we are currently walking, then we call stop walking. But if we are not currently walking, there's no need to call this function. And I'm going to do the same thing here and update the variable to uh, false. So that's the first way to generate footsteps. The second way, which I like to call manual mode, is by using the function trigger step. What this function does is just triggering one step. So I've just opened another project. This time it's a third person project. The first thing we need to do is go to our third person character blueprint and add footsteps just like before. We'll get a reference to it and we will add the same begin play and play setup that we had before. Compile and save. And I'll just head to my animations here. And let's open the third person run animation sequence. I'll just add a new notify track and call it footsteps. If I uh, scroll down the animation and look for the point at which the foot of the character hits the ground, I can right click, add notify, new notify, step. And I'll do the same thing for the left foot here. That looks about right. And now if I press play, whenever the animation comes across one of these markers, it will trigger a notify event that we can use elsewhere. If I go to the animation blueprint and I do notify step, Then we can get an event that refers to the notifier we've just set up. And this will trigger every time that the animation goes over one of those markers. I can get player character cast to third person character. And from there, you can get a reference to the footsteps class. And what this allows us to do is call trigger step directly from the blueprint. Now if I compile and save this and play, we can walk around and hear footsteps. So the last thing I need to show you is how to switch between different surfaces and make the footsteps change depending on what we're walking on. And in order to achieve that, we first need to set up our physical materials in the project settings. So if you go to Engine Physics, if you scroll all the way down, you will see the panel called Physical Surface. This is where you can specify all the different surfaces you want to use in your game. So I've set up seven different surfaces here. And in order to use the physical surfaces that we've just set up, we need to use what's called physical materials. To make a new material, you can just go here, right click in the content browser, and go to physics, physical material. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, like cardboard. And if you head to the physical material properties, then on the bottom here, the surface type setting, is what you'll need to set to the surface type you want to associate it with. So as you can see, I've added all these different floors to my level, and they're just uh, stretched default cubes with different materials. So for example, this one is burnished steel. And if I head to the material here and go to the details panel, you can see here I've added a physical material called metal. 
And if we check what's in the metal physical material, you can see that the surface type has been set to my metal. So that's what I did for all of these cubes here. So now we can finally set up the material detection. And to do this, we can just go to the footsteps class inside the third person character blueprint. And if I go to the surface detection panel over here, I can start adding my surfaces. So you can add as many surfaces as you want uh, by adding new elements to the array. The first variable will be the surface type from your project settings, and the second element will be the material you want it to sound like. So I can set up my grass, for example, to sound like grass. Pretty easy. And then I'll just do that for all of them. Once we've set up all the surfaces we need to detect, we can compile and save. And this time when we play, now the footsteps react to the different materials. So that's how you can implement footstep sounds that react to different surfaces. As you can see, it's super straightforward uh, using our plugin. And there's plenty of other interesting things you can do using this plugin, but I will showcase them later in another video. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.